Hey there YouTube. So in this video I wanted to go over broadly what are the controlled foreign corporation or CFC rules. Um, now there's a lot of kind of myth out there about how US persons and companies just set up these offshore entities and they get to defer tax, they don't have to record income. Now it's partly true. Uh, there are a lot of big companies that have scale that can leverage offshore entities um, to try to defer as much income as possible. But for closely held companies, if it's just you or me wanting to set up a foreign entity and um, you know run income through there and not pay any taxes, it just doesn't work. There's too many anti-deferral rules on the books right now. The CFC rules for subpart F and guilty income, you have PFIC rules, you have permanent establishment risks for foreign entities. Um, and so the, one of the big ones is the CFC rules. So I'm going to go through this just to highlight how um, using offshore entities can still be a valuable tool if you have foreign operations or if you're looking for asset protection, maybe some privacy. But for tax deferral purposes, it really doesn't work too well anymore. So let's dive in. What is a CFC? So a CFC is a foreign entity, foreign corporate entity where more than 50% of the stock, and that's vote or value. So if you have different class of shares, class A, let's say is voting, class B is non-voting, that actually maybe owns the equity. If 50%, if greater than 50% is owned by US persons, so that's US individuals that are tax resident and that they're a US citizen, maybe they're a green card holder or they meet the substantial presence test, or if you have a US entity, so a US corporate entity or US partnership, that also counts as a US person. So if more than 50% of the stock is owned by US persons, it's a CFC. And under the rules, a US person is anybody that owns 10% or more of the shares. Um, so let's look at two easy examples here um, of what is a CFC and what isn't. So an example of what is a CFC, let's say John, Adam, and Brian, are all US citizens and they decide to open a foreign corp in the Cayman Islands, right? They think, okay, Cayman Islands is tax-free, so I can run all my income through there, not pay any tax. Not so fast, right? Okay, so we have these three guys open the entity, they're all US citizens, they each own a third of the stock, right? Greater than 50% of the stock is owned by US people, right? So this is a CFC, okay? John, Adam, and Brian, they're all U.S. citizens. They all own greater than, or they own 10% or more of the stock, right? Because they own a third each. And collectively, 50% um, of the total vote and value in this case, because they don't have different uh, share classes, is owned by U.S. persons. So this is a controlled foreign corp. Now, what the implications are, we'll talk about later. But let's look at an example of what would not be a CFC. So John and Hans open a foreign corp in the Cayman Islands. John's a U.S. citizen and he owns 40%. Hans is a German tax resident. He owns 60. This is not a CFC, right? So John, as a U.S. citizen, he's a U.S. person and a U.S. shareholder for purposes of these rules because he owns 40%. So he owns 10% or more of the stock. However, not 50% of the total voter value is owned by U.S. persons, right? John's only got 40. The other 60% is owned by Hans, who's not a U.S. tax resident, right? He's a German citizen, a German tax resident. Let's say he lives in Berlin. So this would be an entity that is not a CFC. Now, there, there's still, now for um, John, it might not be a CFC, but he could still have other issues. Like it could be a PFIC. Um, if they have a head office in the U.S., there could be some permanent establishment risks or U.S. trade or business risks. So John's not completely off the hook for this anti-deferral regime, but at least in this context, he's not a CFC or the entity is not a CFC. So what are the implications if you are a CFC? If you're a CFC, the foreign entity itself doesn't necessarily have to file anything. Everything falls on the, um, on the U.S. shareholders to do all the reporting. So if you have a U.S. person that owns an interest in a CFC, they're a U.S. shareholder, on their tax return, they need to include an IRS form 5471. 5471s are used to report all the information about the CFC, including financial information and potentially income that needs to be included currently. So you're reporting all the information on the entity itself, so name, 
you know, ma mailing address, um, the statutory resident or um, like the equivalent of a registered agent um, within the country where you set the thing up. Um, and then you include financial information. So profit and loss statement, balance sheet, and then there's potentially um, income inclusion under either subpart F or guilty. Um, the form is really important to file. If you don't file this form, um, and this is, this is even if the company is in a loss position. So even if the company is dormant or has no money, so it loses money every year, you still need to file the form. It's not as if there's some exception or a de minimis rule for profits or um, you know, very little revenue. None of that matters, right? If it's a CFC and you're a US person, you've got to file this form. And not doing so is $10,000 per year, okay? So very, very important to file it. You do not want to get a nice friendly letter from the IRS saying you owe us 10 grand because you, you didn't file this or you filed it late. So when you have a CFC, the income is effectively treated almost like it's passed through. So if you have profits, they're passed through to U.S. shareholders, whether they received any cash or not. So for, for the U.S. persons watching this, you think a lot about, or think of it like an LLC that's a partnership, right? The partnership files a 1065, it gives you a K-1, it allocates income to you, and the income is allocated whether you get any cash distributions or not. Right, the CFCs work in a similar fashion, right? You compute either the subpart F income or guilty income, and those earnings are effectively throw up, uh, flow through up to you as a shareholder, and you report the income on your return and pay the tax, okay? So I, I've, I've touched on subpart and guilty. What are they? So subpart F income has been around the longest, right? The CFC rules were implemented in maybe the 60s. So subpart F income is thought about as movable income. So a lot of it includes portfolio income. So if you have a controlled foreign corp that's earning interest, dividends, uh, royalties, capital gains. So it looks kind of like maybe a hedge fund or an investment fund. Uh, that is, that includes, subpart F income is included in that, in, in that bucket, right? The other types of income are um, income from related parties or income where you're not really generating it within the country where the entity was created. You have it kind of offshore, right? So the related party thing is relevant because a lot of companies will set up um, foreign subsidiaries in other countries and use them as kind of maybe a cost center. So for example, if you have a, a tech company in the US and they want to set up a subsidiary in China or in India or maybe in Europe somewhere and they own 100% of that, that related party there, because you own 100% of the stock, you have a CFC, and if you have some sort of uh, intercompany arrangement where you're you know, incurring costs in um, the foreign country and then billing it back to the US company, that related party revenue creates subpart F income. And then the last one is, um, well, not the very last one, but the most common one uh, of the three here um, is when you set up an entity in a foreign country and your operations are conducted elsewhere, right? So if, you've, if you set up a Cayman Islands company, but you're actually running everything out of India, let's say you have no substance in Cayman, um, that can create subpart F income. Now, guilty income, the global intangible low taxed income, this was added a few years ago as part of the tax reform and uh, the, the uh, TCGA passed in 2017. Guilty was designed to try to capture what subpart F income didn't. So there were a lot of big companies that would either get around the CFC rules altogether or they would have operations in foreign countries, but they would get around all these subpart F income inclusions. And so you still had a CFC, but there was no income inclusion. Well, tax reform said, okay, well, th there's too much of this going around, so we've got to make it even more difficult for companies to defer offshore earnings. So they added guilty. Guilty, in effect, tries to tax uh, what would be intangible assets. So a lot of intellectual property, those types of assets that are stored in foreign companies. So if you, if you find yourself escaping subpart F, then you're probably very likely going to get roped in under the, under the guilty regime. Now it is still possible to avoid both, right? You can avoid both 
if you have actual substance in the foreign country and your balance sheet is pretty heavy with um, property planning equipment, right? Because that's not intangible assets. So the only example practically where you can think about getting around both of these is if you have, let's say, a manufacturing company in a foreign country. Um, so it has buildings, equipment, it has a lot of employees that live and work in the country where you set up the entity. If that's your fact pattern, then you probably get around both, but anything outside of that, it's pretty tough to avoid either of these or both of these regimes. So, um, so that's the long and the short of the CFCs. Uh, I'll have a different video. I mean, I could talk for an hour about just subpart F income alone. So I'll, this is just high level. What are CFCs? What are the issues? Um, what do you need to file? Uh, but again, very important to do not get caught in the trap of thinking, oh, well, somebody told me I could just go offshore and then I can avoid having to record all this income and pay tax. Probably not the case, right? You need to be careful about whether, do you create a CFC? Um, and if you do, do you have any, any of these kind of inclusions um, where you would have to record the income anyway, even if you didn't get any cash dividends out of the company? So uh, that covers everything I wanted to address in this. Um, thank you for watching. And of course, I always appreciate if you can give the video a like, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and i hope to see you again soon thank you